All right, so we're going to show you how to uh, calibrate your Typodons today. Uh, a couple things to note about your trickler before we get started is, uh, one, make sure that your teeth are mounted onto the appropriate arch. So sometimes what we've seen is that the lower and the upper get reversed, and you'll have something that looks kind of like this. So this is not the appropriate relationship. Make sure your maxillary teeth goes on the maxillary arch and the mandibular teeth go in the mandibular arch and you can tell that by where the location of the hinge is. Uh, the other thing you want to do too is that these are magnetized so they'll snap in. Sometimes they don't get lined up properly and your occlusion may be off due to that. Uh, there's a couple knobs here that you kind of want to pay attention to. Uh, these, you want to make sure the knobs back here are tight. Otherwise, if they're loose, you get a little bit of uh, slop and you'll get a little bit of movement in here that we want to eliminate. Okay, so tighten these knobs. And then the other thing that you'll want to look for too is that if you have a large uh, discrepancy in your tooth relationship, uh, for example, if you have a large opening in the anterior here or in the posterior, what you can do to get it closer so we, don't, we can minimize the amount of equilibration you do is actually loosen these knobs or these screws back here and this allows this plate to kind of move around, okay? So we'll loosen both of these screws on the maxillary and mandibular and then you can squeeze your typodont together so that they're in a better occlusal relationship and then go back and then gently tighten those together. So only do this if um, you have a large discrepancy between uh, either your anterior or posterior tooth. So you can show one of your row instructors to see if that loosening of the screws in the back is going to be necessary. For most of you, I don't think it'll be needed. All right, so we're going to start the calibration process and we're going to take our AccuFilm. So this is 21 microns in thickness and basically we're just going to go around and see where our initial marks are. If teeth are coming together, what you'll find is that when you tug on the AccuFilm, um, you won't be able to pull it through. Whereas if you have an area that isn't in contact, you'll be able to pull that straight through. So uh, what we first want to do is just kind of take a look at our occlusal marks and try to match them up with the corresponding arch. So let's start in the posterior here so we can see one, two, three three marks on our um, functional cuss and we see them interdigitate with our marks on our maxillary tooth here. So we got one on the marginal ridge and then one on our non-functional cusp here. And we have one here that is on the incline of the functional cusp hitting on the incline of our functional cusp there. So based on our occlusal equilibration kind of criteria, we know that these two will need to be adjusted on the maxillary. And since both of these are on functional and functional inclines, um, we have the choice to remove from here or there would be acceptable. Okay, so we'll go ahead and do that. So let's take a peek at the remaining arch here. Um, so on this first molar, you can see we got three points here as well as a contact point on the lingual cusp or the functional cusp of your premolar. And if we match that up with the mandibular teeth, you can see the three, three points of contact that correspond as well as that functional cusp here contacting the marginal ridge of that second premolar. So we know that we can leave these cusp tips alone but we'll want to adjust and deepen this uh, marginal ridge here. Okay, so let's continue and kind of see where our other marks are. So here we see a couple marks in the anterior. However, when we go back and check with the articulating paper, I remember that this paper will just slide through. So sometimes you get kind of false marks if you kind of slam this articulator a little too tight. Um, so in, 
so in this situation we're gonna leave these two alone we're not gonna adjust these um, so again you can use the paper just sort of as a guide to see where your heaviest kind of marks are so that definitely pulls or catches and this definitely catches so when we start adjusting we want to selectively grind those areas that um, actually hold the paper and be careful of certain false markings so you got the three points here on this premolar that will correspond with the three here um, and then on this molar as well so again we go through the criteria and we see that we have contact on our non-functional areas so we're going to grind one two we're going to leave this alone and if you wanted to these would be left alone and this would obviously be adjusted so let's go through the process of adjusting these marks and just remember the closer you are to the posterior the less that you'll probably need to adjust so since this is on a hinge if you're open by a little bit back here you're going to be much wider in the front so a little adjustment in the posterior goes a long way in trying to get this anterior portion to start to close down so that means is when I adjust any of the marks on this very distal tooth on this third molar I'm going to use a, um, a red stripe diamond here and just very gently just kind of brush and just touch that ever so slightly to remove that mark. So I'm going to leave that alone because that's a functional cuss. We said that these are probably false, false marks so we can leave that alone. This is on a non-functional cusp incline. We'll buzz that down. Same thing here. Same thing here. We're going to leave that alone because that's a functional cusp. We're going to jump down to the lower and the lingual cusps here. These are non-functional cuffs, so we're going to remove the marks that you see here. Here's a marginal ridge, we don't want that. So here we can see this is the incline of a functional cusp, but that also corresponds to the incline of a functional cusp right here. So we can have the choice of adjusting either one of those marks. So we said we don't want to adjust any of the um, anteriors. Um, at some point they are going to come in contact and we'd rather adjust the lingual surfaces of the maxillary anterior so that we don't alter the incisal edge position of your mandibular teeth. And remember we said that that can affect speech um, because our S sounds occur when we have a little bit of space between our maxillary and mandibular teeth. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly go through these. Okay, so what we should be left with are just marks on our functional cusp areas. So when you're first starting out, it's a good idea just to reset everything. So you can get a 2x2 two two piece of gauze soaked in alcohol and uh, wipe it down. Or you can use the little cavi wipes that we have for you. Just continue to wipe this so we get a fresh start here and you want to make sure that the teeth are dry before you remark it so you can take again some gauze or your air syringe and dry things off so we can remark everything now and we'll go through this process again we can see that the anteriors are still pulling through, so we need to do a little bit more adjustment in the posterior. So let's take another tour again, and we can see now we have more marks now, and our both our premolars now are now in contact. Uh, we still have a little marking here, but we want to leave those alone. Um, and we have our mark on our canine moved from here to here. So sometimes you're going to have that where as you start to adjust one area is out of contact but there's another area that uh, because the teeth are now getting closer together that will come into contact now. So if your dots on your teeth move in a different position um, that's normal and that's part of this equilibration process. So I would still like to see a little bit more contact on more teeth on this side. So that requires us to again go back and we'll have to do our selective grinding again so we'll start that process move marginal ridge 
non-functional cusp. So this mark here is sort of on that marginal ridge. And if we slowly close, we'll be able to see where that's contacting on the opposing tooth. So that contact is on this incline here, is contacting right there. Okay, so they're both on inclines of functional cusp. So again, we have the choice to um, adjust either one of those. You can see pretty clearly that the functional cusp is digging in really nicely into this marginal ridge. So when we get to the mandibular, we're definitely going to want to adjust that marginal ridge down. So this is a heavy mark here. As we adjust this area, that contact will probably get closer and closer to where this cusp tip is. So we have that incline of that functional cusp corresponds to the incline of this functional cusp here. So eventually, if you do enough adjustment, this cusp tip here is going to interdigitate in the central fossa, and then here it's going to interdigitate in the central fossa there. So well, let's wipe these marks off again. And we'll remark. So now our anterior teeth have a little bit more resistance to this AccuFilm. So let's take a look now. All right, so we got a better distributed marks. And let's go through one more round and see if we can do a little bit better in picking up a few more marks on maybe these posterior teeth here if we can um, but we're definitely getting more solid contact on the anteriors I'm going to leave these alone for now So let's just test the intensity of how this paper holds. So definitely holding in the centrals, holding here in this canine area, holding here, a little bit light in the posterior. Okay. So sometimes it's good to have your type around kind of close together and you can see where the teeth like this uh, lateral area, we know that we're going to have to adjust quite a bit more for this to come into contact. So we probably won't be getting, and it, we won't anticipate that we have contact here. Um, so there's a kind of a limit to um, how well we can actually equilibrate uh, these type it on teeth. Um, but go back to criteria and we want to see that you have sufficient anterior and posterior marks. So. Um, so this definitely fulfills our uh, requirement for the number of marks that we want in the anterior posterior. Um, another kind of test that you can do is you can actually remove the lower member and hand articulate it to your 
I'm actually cast and just see if there's any rock as you kind of try to wiggle this back and forth so this is a pretty solid and stable occlusion where it's not really there's only one way in which these teeth will fit together it's not sliding or moving around so when you have something well equilibrated like that then we know that um, we've accomplished our goal and we'll have a stable occlusion so real quickly one more peek as we go around and we got plenty of marks everywhere